Hello, everybody. It's time for the show. Welcome to another episode of Bravo Tea with Jared B. I'm your host, but do I even have to introduce myself at this point? But I am your host, Jared B. Welcome to another episode. I hope you all have had a wonderful and productive weekend. Uh, Not weekend. I hope you've had a productive week. We're about to enter the weekend. So I also hope that you have a great weekend upon you. Before... I get into the Real Housewives of Orange County, which is flying solo dolo in this episode. We don't have any more New Jersey. We don't have any more Vanderpump rules. So it's just Orange County in this episode. And I'll be honest, I don't know if Orange County has enough juice in that orange to keep us all captivated (laughs) in this episode. But I'm happy to talk about it. Because, you know, listen, Orange County has never been the greatest, especially when all the other franchises came. But, like, it's nice to get something light and bright and a little fun and shady and petty after such an intense Vanderpump Rules season and an intense Real Housewives of New Jersey. So I'm happy to have... a something a little light into my life. And, you know, Atlanta is a little heavy this season as well. So, you know, thank you, Orange County, for brightening brightening (laughs) up our days. Leave it to the OC. Before I get into the OC, can we talk about this whole submarine debacle, how five people paid $250,000 to get in a submarine made of Legos to go see the wreckage from the Titanic that sank in 1912. I mean, weren't we all riveted by this information? I mean, me and my coworkers were talking about it. I'm I'm looking up articles online. I'm going on Twitter to see what the Twitterverse is saying. And yes, there were a lot of jokes. I know people have lost their lives, so I'm not trying to make light of such a tragic situation. But I don't care how rich I would be. I don't care how curious I would be. For me, there is no reason to take a submarine underwater. I'm fine with being on a boat. I'm fine with swimming in the ocean. I don't need to go under. Like, I've had friends that have scuba dived, scuba divin, (laughs) no, scuba, scuba dove, scuba dived, yes. (laughs) Scuba divin, scuba dove, scuba dived. And like, although that is I'm curious about scuba diving. I also don't need to see what's under me because I'm the person that gets in the ocean with a shark band. If you've never heard of a shark band, look it up. I don't go in an ocean without it because nothing's going to eat this delicious dark meat. (laughs) No, no, no. No sharks nibbling on my toes. (laughs) Hell to the gnaw. To the gnaw, gnaw, gnaw. It's so corny how I laugh at my own jokes. For Forgive me. But yes, this group of people got in their Lego submarine to look, uh, to, you know, voyage to the, the wreckage of Titanic. And we're all waiting with bated breath because we're told, like, they only have 96 hours of air. And it gets down to 72. And then it gets down to 40. And it's like, oh, they have a day left. And then you wake up and it's like there's no more oxygen. And apparently, due to the pressure of the ocean, the submarine, you know, it imploded. Um, which of course is not a great thing to hear because at the end of the day, people lost their loved ones, a brother, a sister, a son, oh, you know, a husband, a cousin, a friend. Um, but it's just like, also another place I don't need to be is space. Like all these rich people are paying all this money to go to space. And I'm like, we don't have to go everywhere. We can barely maintain the place where we live. We don't have to go to space, okay? Because we don't know what's out there. 
There's all this news about, you know, UFOs. You know, over the past couple of years, the government has released some information about sighting of UFOs. Like, we don't need to go there. And also, I was someone that was a big fan of Xenon. Disney Channel. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Make my heart go boom, boom. My supernova girl. (laughs) I love those movies. And, like, at that age, I was like, oh, it would be cool to live in space. But once you become older and your feet are fully planted on the ground. Hopefully as you mature and become an adult, your feet become firmly planted on the ground. I know that mine have, um, but not barefoot, not barefoot. So yeah, like watching Xenon back in the day. Oh, that's cool. But then you become an adult and you realize there are risks to go into space and I'm not willing to take that risk. Now, if we get to the point where technology has advanced and humans are able to take trips to space that is somewhat affordable and it has been running for 20 years with no tragedies, then I would consider it. I have to see enough people for a long period of time try a thing before I try that thing. Is there anyone out there that agrees with me? Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) So that's all I have to say about that. I'm sorry I've wasted your time on my opinions about that submarine. Uh, My heart goes out to the loved ones uh, who lost their lives. Well, not my heart goes out to the loved ones who lost someone on that submarine. I'm sorry. (laughs) I do feel bad. I do. But it, 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 it's crazy what people will spend their money on not being sure that, like, they're going to survive this voyage. Let me get to the Real Housewives of Orange County. That's why we're all here. So we have season 17, episode three, titled We Cut It Close. Um, before I get to Cut Fitness with Tamara and Jen, let me just mention the Dubrow family dinner. I love how Heather's daughter made it known that she is going to charge her parents' credit card to take a shower in a hotel because her dorm has low shower pressure. At least she told her parents, I call that responsible and forward-thinking, Um, for a teenager to let them know that she's going to (laughs) run their credit card amok at probably, you know, a four-star, probably five-star hotel. She's going to go to the Ritz-Carlton, the Four Seasons, the St. Regis, get a nice suite, treat her friends in college, take a nice hot shower, but at least she warned her parents. And then Heather Dubrow mentions that, you know, they're going to sell the house, which in real time, they have sold that ginormous house in Orange County because apparently they are moving to Los Angeles. And, you know, like Heather talks about how she wants to reignite her acting career. But let's be serious. Heather has been talking about her acting career for as long as she has been on this show, and I have not seen her in anything else since the Malibu Country debacle several seasons ago. But you know where I could see Fancy Pants? The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But, like, listen, who I really think should be on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is Kimora Lee Simmons. Because I don't know if you guys saw on the internet, on Twitter... On Friday, Kamora Lee Simmons, who is the ex-wife of Russell Simmons, the music mogul, which um, apparently he's not moguling anymore because his daughter called him out on Instagram and called him called him broke. There's a lot happening in that family right now, and Kamora Lee Simmons knows a lot of those ladies on the show. And I, I listen, I'm not one to suggest that Bravo try to capitalize on that family hurt. But if you, Kamora Lee Simmons and I, Aoki Lee, are going to be on Twitter live airing out your family laundry, then we should be able to watch it. That's all. 
And I did email Bravo and the production company of Beverly Hills and sent them like the links to what was going down on Twitter. And I was like, listen, you guys need to call Kamora Lee Simmons. Back to OC. So we get to cut fitness with Tamara and Jen. Uh, Tamara is hungover from the boat (laughs) where she told Shannon to go F a duck. And Jen basically helps Tamara recollect what happened on that boat. Jen tells Tamara that she told Shannon to go fuck a duck. Tamara doesn't remember. Jen tells Tamara Shannon apologized. Tamara doesn't remember. Tamara says, well, she didn't eat all day and drank a little bit too much. And I personally feel like this is a cop out. I feel like Tamara came to that boat situation, boat event, Gina's event, her Flamingo event, actually, to be more specific. I believe that Tamara came to that event locked and loaded. And I believe, listen, Tamara has mentioned the fact, and other housewives have mentioned, that they do drink before these events, I guess, to, like, you know, get the nerves out, to relax a little bit. And, you know, that's when we see the mess unfold on television. Uh, so I do believe that Tamara came onto that boat locked and loaded. I don't, I don't, I'm not falling for the whole, I didn't eat all day and I drank too much. Tamara, you are a quarter pint. Why would you go without eating all day and then drink? Come on. Tamara, be responsible, but I understand you were hired to come back on the show. You had a job to do. So I'm not complaining, but I am complaining. And also, wasn't this Tamara's intention to create a moment, to create conflict before actual resolution with Shannon. Let's remember Tamra did lose her orange. I know I just talked about this. Tamra did lose her orange and then she was brought back after being on pause, as Dorinda Medley would say. Um, and to me, it kind of just feels like Tamra came back on the show with something to prove that maybe Bravo should have never let her go. And so she's going to make sure that she holds on to this orange, but Tamara, if you hold that orange too tight, it's going to burst and all that orange juice is going to get in your hands and you're going to have to clean it up and your ass is going to be fired again. I just like Tamara's capable, great television, but it's like, oh, when Tamara does her Tamara things, I'm like, here's Tamara doing the things. <laughs> Whew. And then the conversation turns to Jen and her affair. And Tamara talks about how it made things rocky in their friendship because apparently Tamara and Eddie were friends with Jen's ex-husband or soon-to-be ex-husband. And Tamara didn't necessarily know that Jen was having a full-on affair with her now boyfriend, Ryan. And this is like setting the groundwork for conflict to come. Like, clearly, listen, I am looking at Tamara Shady. I am. Because this is supposed to be your friend, your good friend of many years. And yes, you did say there was, you know, a a, a downturn in the friendship, a little slump in the friendship. But, you know, here you are on television calling, you know, bringing up your friend's affair, even though Jen mentioned it first. And I feel like once a housewife mentions a thing, it's fair game. So Jen did this to herself, but I'm still looking at Tamara with a side eye because what kind of friend are you, Tamara? And I'm thinking about that song by TLC, one of my favorites, What About Your Friends? A lot of people don't know about like TLC's first album, even though my favorite TLC album is Crazy, Sexy, Cool, but like that first TLC album slaps. Go check it out if you have the time or if you were interested in TLC's first (laughs) debut album. So we get to crystal shopping with Shannon and I love Shannon. She I just covered my mouth when I said I love Shannon. So I'm going to repeat that again. We go crystal shopping with Shannon and I love Shannon. Shannon's quirky. 
She's great television. She, she, she's cuckoo. She's crazy. She's emotional. Even though I, I, I firmly believe that Shannon is in her stoic era. I'll explain later. Well, in a second. So as we know, Shannon loves crystals. And Shannon informs all of us that she has jewels in her teeth, crystals in her teeth, that she got put in there. That is some rich people stuff right there. Putting jewels in your teeth for good energy to come your way. Most people are just trying to keep their teeth. A lot of people don't even have you know, dental coverage and their health care with their job. But Shannon is having jewels put in her teeth like she is a rapper. Basically, Shannon Bedore is wearing a grill. <laughs> I bet you didn't think about it that way. But Shannon talks about how she feels like having the crystals in her mouth has helped her, has been good for her. And I'm like, Shannon, we have been watching your life unfold for the last nine seasons. Do you really think those crystals have brought great energy your way? Because based on what I've seen the past couple of years, I beg to differ. (laughs) Shannon, take those crystals out and you may see your life turned around. But she did say those crystals are deeply lodged in there. So she... She would just have to get her whole, all her teeth removed, but she can get dentures. And I'm sure you can buy fake teeth, veneers. Take those crystals out, girl. Take them out. And so then Shannon gets a FaceTime from Tamara. Tamara is emotional. She apologizes over the phone. Tamara was being a little extra. I do feel like Tamara was being a bit performative. Tamara's doing all the things, if I have not mentioned. Tamara is pulling all the things out, her little bag of housewife tricks. And, you know, it's kind of like we've seen it all before. But I understand Tamara was hired to come back to the show for a reason. For all those Tamara stands out there. So Tamara apologizes. She's emotional. Like I said, I feel like she's being a little extra and performative. And honestly, I don't know what to believe from Tamara. I don't know what to believe because it's like you talk about keeping it real, but then, you know, you're, you're giving soap opera performances on the show. But like at the end of the day, even though I say I feel like she's being performative, this is who Tamara has been from day one. That's my opinion. You know, did you go to Bass Lake? That's Tamara. She'll cry in a bush. Tamara's extra. Thank you, Tamara, for coming back on the show. Well, thank you, Bravo, for bringing Tamara back on the show. Thank you. I live for the applause, applause, applause. I live for the applause, applause. Live for the applause, applause. Let me stop. Shout out to Lady Gaga, if you're listening. She does like the Real Housewives, but I doubt Lady Gaga is listening to me yet. Yet. So like I said, I don't know what I believe from Tamara, but this is why I mentioned that uh, Shannon is in her stoic era, because Shannon is a brick wall. You impenetrable. Impenetrable, 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 impenetrable. Yes, Lord, that's so embat, that's so embarrassed. Like, I swear I'm educated and I know how to talk, but you know, the microphone, this light turns red and you start recording and you forget that you've had an education. I mean, I made it through high school and I have a little college education, but Lord have mercy. I can't even say impenetrable. Forgive me, listeners. <laughs> You're like, oh, it, he is a mess. Is he sober? Yes, I'm sober. I'm drinking water as I take a sip. But yeah, Shannon is a brick wall. And Shannon is not up for the BS. Like last week, Tamara was yelling at Shannon on a boat. Shannon was giving her nothing back. Remember, Tamara was about to jump off the boat. (laughs) And Shannon was like, let her jump. Tamara gives her an emotional apology, and Shannon's just icy. 
but I love it because Shannon usually gets emotional. And then like these girls start spinning a narrative on the show that Shannon is crazy. So Shannon is giving you nothing. She's paying you dust. Dust. So yes, shout out to Shannon Storm Spador for holding her ground and not giving ladies anything to call her crazy about. Shout out to Shannon. Stoic Shannon. Hashtag Stoic Shannon. Hashtag Stoic Shannon error. Hashtag shut up, Jared, and keep going. So we get to Taylor Armstrong's acting lesson. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> I loved this scene. It's vintage Real Housewives of Orange County. I would say specifically Malibu country. If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> Taylor got a role in a movie. And Heather comes over for her acting lesson, because if you did not know, Heather is an actress and a season will not go by without us being reminded that Heather Dubrow was an actress. But the sad, (laughs) the sad but funny thing is Taylor is desperately trying to get Heather to take a role in this movie that's being filmed in Oklahoma And Taylor's like, girl, we would have a scene together. And Heather was like, oh, my God, that's so cute. Taylor, that means, you know, fall back. I'm not interested. (laughs) That that's what oh, my God, that's so cute means. And that that was funny from Heather because that is authentic Heather Dubrow. She doesn't necessarily want to offend Taylor Armstrong. So she gives you an oh, my God, that's so cute. You're adorable. I love that you think that you can just ask me to be on some random movie in Oklahoma that managed to cast you in a role when I'm actually an actress. I feel like that's what Heather Dubrow was thinking. Or maybe I'm just projecting my thoughts, because if I was Heather Dubrow, that's what I would be thinking if Taylor Armstrong invited me to Oklahoma to be in some random movie. I'm just saying. But if you know the Real Housewives of Orange County, you should know that this is not the end of this movie. (laughs) We're going to hear about it again, and I guarantee you this is going to create conflict between Heather and Taylor. Because the fact that they are talking about receipts about this conversation and confessionals, just know it's going to be a thing. So get... Hold on to your bridges, OC fans. Hold on, because we're about to go through it. We got a Shannon and Tamara friendship debacle, and then we're about to have a Heather and Taylor movie debacle. But I do believe that Heather Dubrow is right. This is not Taylor's role to offer. There are several lines of communication that have to happen to book an actor for a movie. So, like, when Heather Dubrow was talking about, you know, pay scale, is it union, is it non-union, the director reaches out, the producer reaches out, you usually reach out to the manager of the actor you're trying to book, depending on how big they are, you reach out to the agent. So the fact that Taylor Armstrong is being like, girl, I have a movie role for you, (laughs) it's, I bet you it's not the role of a lifetime, but congratulations to Taylor Armstrong for broadening her horizons and booking a movie role. So then the acting coach arrives. This is Lauren, where purple seems to be her favorite color. Um, I'll, I'll, men- I'll mention that in a bit. So Taylor and Heather read the scene. This scene, I guess, that Taylor Armstrong is going to be in. And I have to give my props to Taylor for bringing a little personality a little personality, excuse me, to this character. But I believe where she went wrong, and, you know, I'm not an actor. I did a little theater in high school. That was, like, 12, 13 years ago. But where she went wrong with this is that she's playing the role of a news reporter. And Taylor read her lines as Taylor. A news reporter does not emote the way that Taylor was emoting. A news reporter does not talk the way that Taylor was talking, which is why the acting coach, Lauren, was like, you you got to breathe from your hoo-ha, which means, you know, you got to lower your voice. He's like, 
Hello everyone, this is Jared Barnes coming to you with Channel 2 Action News and Calamity has broken out in Atlanta. Shots fired at Linux Mall. You know, like, I don't know, shout out to Linux Mall. There hasn't been a shooting in a while, but like, that's what just came to my mind. You know, I hate to mention a shooting in that way. Forgive me. Listen, we lived through some dark days here in the States. Some dark days. But, like, yeah, that's what Taylor should have been bringing to this news reporter role. And I have to say that I love this acting coach. Even though her exercises seem funny, what she's trying to teach is legit. Because it's all about breathing from your diaphragm and not your chest, which is probably what I should do for this podcast. Because sometimes I listen and, like, I'm like, like, you know... I I just have to make sure I don't eat cheese before I record because I am lactose intolerant. And when I have cheese, when I have dairy, I get congested and then I hear it in my recording and it sounds gross. So I hope that I have not turned you off to this podcast because I'm breathing weirdly and congested and mucusy because of dairy. That is my fault, not yours. And I'm working on it. But I love me some cheese. Love me some cheese. And cheese is pretty much the only fun thing I'm able to eat at this point because I'm doing a thing. I'm doing a thing, but I've been successful thus far. But yes, it's all about breathing from your diaphragm and not your chest. And that helps with not being so breathy. And it will also help Taylor not run out of breath when she's acting. So Lauren is legit. She's funny, but she's legit. And I also... I also mentioned that Lauren seems to love the color purple, Uh, not the movie, not the book, but the color actual purple. Um, So if you go to Peacock and you go to the Real Housewives of Orange County this season, in the first episode, Lauren, in in the clip that is used for the episode in the picture, there is a picture of Lauren in a purple shirt sitting next to Tamara and what seems like other housewives of Orange County. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering, was Lauren being tested for a housewife? Was Lauren being tested for a friend of the housewife? Because why else would we see her gathered having a kiki with all the real housewives of Orange County? So I'm wondering, did did Lauren not shine through? Because to me, she sh- she shone she shined, <laughs> she shone, she shined through to me. And she has personality. She seems to have a great sense of humor. She's quick. Her timing, her comedic timing, th- those are snaps. I'm doing that on purpose. Her comedic timing is really well. And that also could be with the help of editing. But listen, sign Lauren, sign Lauren up. I would like to see more of her. And, you know, then she's going to compete with Heather, du- Heather Dubrow. Battle of the Actresses, you see, bravo. I have just introduced a potential storyline conflict between Lauren and Heather because Lauren's going to be like, girl, you've been in some guest spots and I've been in four Broadway shows where some of them have been nominated for Tonys. I could see the conflict now. Bravo, give me my, give me my credit. <laughs> give me my credit. <laughs> So then we get to the cut fitness closing party. And I just feel like everyone was like waiting for the arrival of Shannon Storms Bedore. Shannon arrives in Orange County and in all black for the cut fitness closing party. Isn't isn't that symbolic that cut fitness? This is a closing party and Shannon is dressed like she's going to a funeral. Is this the funeral? Is this the funeral of Cut Fitness? Is the funeral of is this the funeral of her friendship with Tamra? I'm loving Stoic Shannon. So Shannon enters. Tamra apologizes to Shannon. Much more believable, Tamra. Much more believable. And we get to Heather and Gina at a high boy. Gina mentions. That Jen 
posted something on Instagram. And I guess there was a TikTok trend about Hallelujah or a Hallelujah song. I don't, I'm, I may sound dated. I'm 31. I'm not an old man, but I'm not into the tick. I, I don't have a TikTok account. I don't have the TikTok app. Some friends will send me some TikToks in the text messages, but I'm not fully invested in joining TikTok. But shout out to all the TikTokers around the world because there is a lot of you. But yeah, Jen posted on Instagram, it was part of a TikTok trend, the day before this cut fitness closing party that she is just grateful that the doors of her yoga studio were able to stay open. I'm shocked that Gina was going to use this (laughs) in the moment at this party to create conflict. But housewives will do what a housewife will do. But let me tell you, Heather was like, you know, let's put a kibosh on this. Let's put this little nugget of information in our back pocket and let's see if we could use it a little later. But, you know, Gina waited 20 whole minutes, maybe, to mention the Instagram post. But at least she waited until after Eddie's speech. That's what you call respect. New York respect. Let me give Eddie his little speech, but then let me blow up this whole event with my discovery on Instagram. And I have to say, shout out to Gina. Gina had a job to do. At this moment, Gina earned her check. She earned her check. I know there's a lot of people out there that feel like Gina is not a great housewife. I will defend Gina because she is from Long Island, New York, as am I. And I'm jealous that she still has a Long Island accent, and I don't. But Gina had a job to do, and I applaud her for it. If I were her friend, I would be looking at her shady. And even Emily mentions, like, you know, Gina should be the last person bringing this up. But, you know, Gina did the thing. Angela Bassett did the thing. Too bad Gina doesn't have a name that sounds like Angela Bassett, or I could have easily replaced her with Angela Bassett. Shout out to Angela Bassett, who should have won that Oscar for her role in that Marvel movie. Because I did see that movie that Jamie Lee Curtis won her Oscar for, and I watched it, and I did not see a scene worth an Oscar. But, you know, shout out to Jamie Lee Curtis. She got it. But I'm looking at the Academy with a side eye because Angela Bassett did do the thing. Oh, I already mentioned I mentioned Angela Bassett doing the thing in a previous episode. Let me stop. I'm going on random tangents this evening. And it's probably because I'm very sleepy. (laughs) I'm very sleepy and I can't wait to go to bed, but not before not before I watch tonight's episode of Project Runway. If you love fashion, watch Project Runway, season 20, all-star season. It's really good. I'm excited for the new episode. So then, like I said, Gina had a job to do, and she waited until Eddie was done with his speech. And then Gina mentions to Jim, like, you know, that that Instagram post that she posted yesterday, because that's how Gina talks, um, was a little shady. Like, were you trying to shade Tamara's event? And you can tell that Jen was genuinely caught off guard. You can't trust these hoes. Jen, you can't trust these hoes because they're going to come for you. You are the newbie. You have just joined a sorority and you were being hazed and you're kind of setting yourself up to be hazed. I have to admit, even though like the Instagram post was innocent, but like, whew, you're making these girls job easy for them to throw you under the bus, Jen, to throw you under the bus. But like I said, Jen was caught off guard. Jen said she didn't mean it mean anything by it but you know this conversation makes its way down the table to Tamara you know I think it was Jen that tried to explain the situation or maybe Gina tried to explain the situation to Tamara and Tamara like took this little nugget of information and tried to turn it into something was like yeah I do agree with Gina that was messed up what did you do that for I'm like oh okay Tamara 
five minutes ago, you had no clue that this conversation was even happening. But Gina dropped a little nugget of information in your hand. Gina handed you the ball, and now you're going to dribble it and try to make a shot. So respect to the housewives. (laughs) Respect to the housewives. Um, Then these ladies are talking around the high boys, I guess, after they eat their hibachi. I love a hibachi, even though that fire is hot, hot, but I love a hibachi. And the conversation around these high boys, if you don't know what a high boy is, it's those tall tables that you see like at a wedding during cocktail hour. If you go to a cocktail party, those tall tables that people have drinks and, you know, have their small plates with hors d'oeuvres on them. That is a high boy. I'm not talking about, like, California sober like Gina. That is a high boy, a tall table. So the ladies are talking around the high boys and the conversation about Jen's affair. That comes up again. And it seems like, to me, Tamara is the ringleader of this whole conversation that's currently happening. And Tamara, how are you going to bring your friend, Jen, on the show and then throw her under the bus Giving us all the dirt, thank you, Tamara, <laughs> about her affair with Ryan. You're in your confessional, basically sharing what you know about the whole situation. And I have to say, I'm not mad at Tamara. I'm not mad at Gina. Jen should be mad at herself because here is a lesson for new housewives. Be careful about what you share because any personal information you divulge will be used against you in a court of housewives. Because at this moment, Emily's digging for dirt, asking all the questions. The lawyer and her came out. Emily is digging for buried treasure. She's like, we're going to milk this information that Jen has shared all on her own accord. Also with the help of her bestie, Tamara. Hashtag bestie. (laughs) And yeah, like I said, be careful about what you share with a real housewife when it's your first season. Because Emily is digging dirt. Emily is digging a hole for you. And Jen, you are just going to get in the hole and bury yourself. At this point, you're just going to sweep the dirt back over yourself and just lay there. Because you gave them the information and they're going to use it. And the same thing happened to Danielle on The Real Housewives of New Jersey. She shared that she wasn't on speaking terms with her brother. And of course, some of the ladies used that against her. Don't share everything. If a housewife calls you out on things that they have heard about you, then you use that time to shift the narrative to create your own. And you handle your business and you speak your piece and you speak the truth. But don't volunteer up personal information about your life because it will be used against you. And Emily, she's dug up so much dirt. Emily is making it seem like Jen got her ex-husband a job in Oklahoma so that Jen could ignite an affair with Ryan. Jen is probably like, Lord, what did I sign myself up for? Mayhem. Madness, entertainment for me and us. Welcome to the club, Jen. Welcome to the club. So that's the Real Housewives of Orange County. That's all I got for you. I don't know how long this episode is. I said a lot of things. I went into random topics. So I'm sorry. This was a mess. But I enjoyed this episode. It felt easy and breezy. Like, I really feel like I didn't have to break down everything. I just gave you authentic Jared B. Authentic Jared. That's Jared. So um, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you again for supporting the show. I've gotten some new reviews for the podcast. Thank you for the reviews. I appreciate the love and good reviews, five-star reviews. I think we have like 13 five-star reviews. So keep on reviewing, keep on subscribing, keep on telling your friends, your family, your coworkers, cat, dog, your AI buddy, however you get down, let them know there's a brand new podcast called Bravo Tea with Jared B. New episodes every Wednesday and Friday. And you can follow the podcast on at Bravo T with Jared B on Instagram and at Bravo T with JB 
on Twitter. And that's all the Bravo tea I have for you today. Good night, everyone.